Hello and welcome to Bay TV's short film show where we showcase and bring you up to speed with local filmmakers and their films. Indeed, we'll be looking at some of the talent in front of and behind the cameras. Writers, directors and of course, actors. <laughs> So uh, with us today we have the director of The Green Dress, uh, Mr. Carl Bramwood, also the writer, Pam Taylor, and the cinematographer, Mr. Peter Axford. Welcome guys, thanks for coming on and talking about your film. Very much so. First question, tell us something about the story behind the story of The Green Dress. Um, started off because I was doing a film with Carl and Pete um, and I liked the, the way they, you know, their films came across. I found a sensitivity in the approach to when they were making a film. And so I knew if I scripted something that we as a team, because I felt passionate about my work as well, could achieve something that was really good. And so that weekend I went home and, I, and then I phoned Carl up and I said, Hi Carl, guess what, I've got the green dress. And he said, Okay, well, we'll have a look at it. Um, I knew just scripting this that it would be we could work so well together on this. Um, it's very hard to say no to me as well. Yeah. So when um, it's very persuasive. Uh, yeah, and I knew that although it was that you because you're going to say period drama, although it was period, it would be achievable because you know if you don't stretch to to bring that into your work, you know the unachievable. Try for the unachievable as to the easiness. Um, but can I just ask then, how did the, these guys, the filmmakers, react then to it being in period? What were your first thoughts? Shocked at first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought about it and I thought of each piece and I thought, no, we can do that, we can do that. And then when I realised in my mind that I, we could do these different things, I thought, yeah, we're going to do it. Because it's, think it's a real challenge. For, from a visual standpoint, um, it, it, the di it was like dialogue mm. over it, it was voiced over. Sure. So for me, it, it was you could focus on just taking the shots and then worry about the sound later. So even though we had the complication mm. of it being period, mm. we took out a lot of the sound. So that sped up the production, it, it, it sort of balanced it out for me. And the nicest part was um, we sent the script out so we, because we needed a, a period car we, uh, or we needed a particular actress to look a certain way because I chose the actors from you know and I knew what I was looking for because when I write I, I should say this I have voices in my head <laughs> honestly <laughs> no, no. I don't want to be She's sexy not losing it, honest. but you, well, you, you, you need a gone. voice you need the voice of the character to actually speak to you and the child yeah. was speaking and the people were speaking and so I rang different people and said look if I send you the script can we borrow your car borrow it Please just read the script and see what you think. And they were, they were, wow, they were wonderful. They were brilliant. Even they down to the satchel we borrowed from um, the museum and yes, the books and right. everything. Yeah. We made sure. Well, that the houses. That well, the houses. houses we went to. Yeah, it was like you've, you've stacked up a lot against yourselves. You're in period. Yes. Mm. Yeah. A lot of locations. Mm. Yeah. You're not afraid to go outside. No. You've got children in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what's going on? Yeah. Um, why not try for something? Well, Caitlin, who plays the main yeah. part, it did take us a while, didn't it, before we decided the on the yeah, child, child, the main child. child actor in the film. She had to be. She, she had, had to be. Out. We did interview quite a few, and they didn't quite measure up, but she did. She, she came over really well. She was yeah. a star. Mm. What, what was, was, was it about her that, 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 that um, decided? Her little voice, well. professionalism, her whole mm. look was just right. It just nailed it for us. And without that person, we didn't have a film because really it was riding on that one person. It's the child. The child um, that makes She it. had the ability to read a script and have the knowledge of an adult. Right. Of how to put it over. Of how to she put was it incredible. Over. And you could say something to her once and then Carl would say, go and run up that hill again. I mean, 12 times he had to run up and down <laughs> that hill, I assure you, and it was hot. 
She never complained. In fact, she told you to hurry That's up. That's right. And the other <laughs> thing, yeah, the true story, the making of the other thing, yeah. is crying because secretly she, she had to cry. Yeah. Give me an, give me a um, onion. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, she I, was fine. Uh, we also, had drops and everything for her, but she, she had a sense of really, humour as well. Oh, she didn't take something. She really tried very like, hard, didn't she? Yeah. To, well, I like, I like the us. scene where she puts the chocolates under the dress and she has yeah, a little that little, that little grin. You yeah, know, She goes like that. It's really cool. So Peter. Yeah, the, the film has a, a quite a distinctive visual style to it. Yeah. How did you did you work with Carl on that to, to, to create that? Was it yeah. a close thing? It's yeah. more of a cinematic style. Yeah. That's the way we like to make films yeah. with okay. that and, impact and of shot. Yeah, I think the piece with the apple, though. I mean, that you you literally I watched you do that. Yeah. It was just lovely yeah. the way you literally beautiful. Cause you were well, he had to die, wasn't it? We only had one apple. She didn't want to eat anymore. No. She was sick of apples. Yeah. So she threw it in. We got that first shot, and then quickly I went round and took it as it floated away oh, okay. and it, you know it's just a celebration really yeah. you get yeah. such an excitement when it works first time yeah are you the type of team who likes to work stuff out with the script of course when you're there do you storyboard yes we did do storyboard only very basic yeah. but um, a lot of the time it was when you're on set things do change yeah. so your your um, views change slightly so you have to accommodate that you have to think on your feet pretty quick because you've got people waiting to get on and do their piece so you might just change it just slightly mm -hmm. but i think we did it and I it worked so. i think we found storyboard was a bit restricting as it well. was we did a main storyboard yeah. we have that somewhere of the church sequence yeah that was yeah. really complicated i think that you really need, was. No, you need the, to want to know it yeah, spontaneity, we did have you? that but i had certain things in mind like the mm. close-up of the lady in the green dress yeah. uh, in the church that was always in my mind i wanted it to have real impact mm. and then working round and up to that on, on the day really. Mm. So you've both worked in, Peter and Carl, you've worked in the corporate market. Yes, that's Pam, right. Have you worked in the corporate market before? I run Chatterbox Productions which is a, a theatre film company so we do a little right. bit um, and we do theatre work and I teach them as well. Okay, well, we're all set now for the green dress. Take a look at this.
The green dress. Oh, what a journey we all had with you. I remember the first time I saw you. I was eight when I started walking home from school on my own. Mum said we all had to learn to be responsible for doing things for ourselves now that Dad was gone. I asked her where he'd gone and why, but she just kept saying his country needed him or something. I didn't really understand. Mum, where's Dad gone? He's had to go. His country needs him. But we need him. And he can't leave yet because he hasn't kissed me yet. That night I sat and cried till my eyes hurt. Mam had been really busy all week and didn't have time to talk to me much now, so I was not in a hurry to get home. As I was passing the shop, the assistant was dressing the mannequin with the dress and all I could do was stand there and watch. I'd never seen a dress of such style and elegance. The fabric was silky and shiny and glided gently over the mannequin and I just wanted to touch it. I watched as it took perfect shape. Mum's looking tired today. So it's really hard to look after me and Libba since Dad left. She takes in all that washing from the ladies in the big houses on the bush road over the park. And I know it makes her hands ache. I wish I was bigger, then I could help her. I'll help her and maybe she'll smile again and maybe Dad would come home. the money, I'd buy that dress for me mum, because I know she'd look lovely in it, and I know she'd start singing again like she used to when Dad was around. Aye, she'd start to wear her lipstick again, and she'd probably sit me on her lap and read to me and Libby stories about Peter Rabbit and his friends again. If only she had that dress. How can I tell her it's gone? The one thing that will make her look lovely again and bring Dad home is gone. Oh, Evie. What is it, love? Nothing, Mum. Come on, let's get that bath in, eh? And there are some of you here today who think it's time to profit from this war. There are some of you who have kept your own families fed and clothed and not spared a thought for others, or of this church and its upkeep. These people know who they are. These people cannot hide from the eyes of the Lord, for the Lord hath many eyes and many ways of seeking you out. Mrs. Howard, would you like to say said, Thou shalt not steal. By not sharing the profits of your earned wage, I ask you, is that not stealing? This church. Do you want to go to Sunday school? House, no, which ma'am. we all take for granted for its comfort and its companionship, requires the generosity of all its parishioners for its upkeep. Yet there are some of you that would rather buy an extra cut of meat and put their hands into their pockets for its necessities. Wow! How did you do that, God? We have to be thankful. To and what do we do now? The lovely ladies who run the Why has it all gone wrong, God? Where can I be bigger so that I could have got the green dress for me, man? Raised a healthy 
And why does that vicar man keep telling us that we're all going to go to hell? Because we ask for the things that we want. Because surely that's what everyone does. Isn't it, God? These ladies are to be congratulated, for they have been a tower of strength to our small community in these hard times. Bless you. We knew when we heard six months ago that the German troops had stormed across the Polish frontier and that the Nazis had begun attacking the civilians of Poland's capital, Warsaw. And when we heard that ten oh! Polish towns had been attacked... Can't you keep that child under control? Look at my dress! Oh! Oh, Libby! Oh, look, I'm so sorry. But I can clean it for you. It's what I do. And there'll be no charges, of course. I'll make it as good as new. It is new. And how do I know you'll do as you oh, say? Oh, may I intervene, Miss Bowden, when I can vouch for Mrs. Howard here that she is definitely a woman of her word. Look, bring it to my house later. Or I can send Eve here for it. I'll have it ready for you early tomorrow. Very well. But I'm not happy. I'll send my driver with it later. Don't want any more of your offspring doing any more damage than has already been done. The dress from Miss Bowden. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Howard, here is the dress which you have agreed to clean for no charge. When you have done so, please send your child with a note to 5 Yarwood Road and I will have my driver collect it. I could see by the way she held it that my mother had fallen in love with it as I had. I knew that she wanted to own it and that she needed to feel its softness on her skin. I hadn't seen my mother look as happy as she did that night. She looked how she used to look before Dad had left her. The dress floated along and down her body. She turned and I could see that she held a photo of Dad in her hands. Occasionally she would close her eyes and I knew she was dreaming of him. She looked radiant, her cheeks flushed, her lips red. I sat and watched her and I would I'd disturb her and take her from the place she had gone to in her mind. But she was already gone. Oh God, please let me mum have the dress. Please let the dress stay here with us and I promise I'll do better with my schoolwork. Aye, they did a lot of damage last night, the Jerry's did. Well, most of the big houses down on Yarwood Road, they did. Mother looked lovely in that dress when she stepped out that day. She only wore it on Saturdays when she'd go out with Dad. Oh yes, I forgot to say, he managed to come home on leave. He'd take her dancing and show her off to all his friends at their local dance and they and their girlfriends would tell her how lovely she looked. Libby and I would try it on from time to time and paint our faces and then stare at ourselves in the mirror laughing. We never did really find out what happened to that lady from the church. By all accounts, she was called back to London to look after her sick aunt, and she never returned to Yarwood Road on account of it coming down that night of the air raid. 
I was really worried that something bad had happened to her and that God had heard me making deals with him so I could keep the green dress. But no. I think Mam would approve of me wearing this green dress today to say goodbye to her. After all, this was all down to me and this dress. <laughs>